how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome back to Takanyo Emergent Biopark in Jurassic World Evolution, a project where we're working on creating a biologically accurate dinosaur park and preserve using the use of mods. Now, before we get started, as always, just a quick mention to say that modding is not officially supported by the developers of the game Frontier, and if you want to do so, please do so at your own discretion, make sure to back up your files, all that. But as I also always say, modding is pretty cool and it has really, like, it's really bringing a kind of a breath of fresh air into the game and kind of bringing a lot of life into it, which is really fun to do and fun to see. So without further ado, let's talk about today's episode. So today's one is going to be a bit of a shorter one. It's just a single habitat we're working on today. Um, and it's going to be a pretty big habitat. It's the biggest one so far. And it's going to be a Cretaceous North America habitat. So that means we're going to be talking animals like Triceratops, Ankylosaurus, and Montosaurus. Um, Alamosaurus, which is a great new sauropod, well it's not a new sauropod mod, it's been out for a while, but it is uh, something I've not played with before and I really wanted to include the sauropod here in the game. And it's a beautiful animal, such a well done mod. Um, and of course the different mods we're going to be using are all as close to biological realism as we can achieve, because that's kind of the goal of the park. And we've got a few different mods we're using of course, and let me just go over them really quickly. Of course when it comes to the, the Alamosaurus itself, that is by Putra DLY. So I don't think we feature any of their mods before, but it's really, really great work. Um, of course, we are going to be including some Jagged Fang Designs mods, because of course we are. The Edmontosaurus and the Triceratops are both by them, and they are stunning as always. I love the Triceratops in particular, and the Edmontosaurus as always is one of my favorite mods of all time. Really beautiful work. The Triceratops here is based off the skin that you see in the documentary series Prehistoric Park, which is one of my all-time favorite documentaries. Such a good show. Really great, so I would recommend it. And it's Nigel Marvin, so yeah. And uh, back here, and then of course we've got a couple more different uh, mods we are using. Uh, did I mention we are also including the Struthiomimus as a kind of like a substitute Ornithomimus? And that is by uh, Digital Duck, of course, part as part of their um, Feathered Dinosaur Pack, which is really, really good. Did I miss out any of them? The Ankylosaurus, of course, is also by Digital Duck, which is great. That's all the animals we're going to be including today. It's, that's, like I said, very, very big habitat here, as you can see. And in fact, later, when you watch the live portion, you will notice it's even bigger than it looks here because I've actually increased the size of it because I realized it might not be big enough once I put in the sauropods and actually had a look at how they kind of move around in it. But great animals, nonetheless. I think it's nice to try and recreate kind of an ecosystem here uh, as well as, you know, just kind of have a bunch of animals that probably would have lived together, maybe not all together like this, but still in the same kind of environment, the same kind of geographic location. The one animal in the in the game we're not including, which is probably part of this ecosystem, is of course Tyrannosaurus rex, which I actually have a cool idea for, and we're going to do that in the next episode probably, because I really want to do that idea, I think, so I'm quite excited. Uh, so quick note about some of the animals, just to talk about them a little bit. The Almosaurus is a massive sauropod, of course, huge, huge animal, and it's one of the last, um, the last ever sauropod, because these, in fact, it's one of the last ever dinosaurs. It's recovered, the fossils were recovered from just at the boundary of the, the KPG extinction event, so these guys were probably around right up till the end, which is quite cool to know that, you know, sauropods, when you think of them, you usually think of Jurassic giants, like Brachiosaurus, Diplodocus, Apatosaurus. But they did last quite a while, especially up to the Cretaceous, and this one in particular was probably the largest animal in all of North America, which is quite insane and quite cool. You know, you would think that these would have existed alongside Tyrannosaurus, but they would have not been prey for, like, at all. I can't imagine they would be, because of how just how titanic they were. Huge animals. Easily, I can imagine them not having any natural predators at all once they've, you know, grown into adulthood. And of course, the other animals, we have Triceratops, which is one we haven't really explored on the uh, in the game very much, yeah, especially once modded. They've got a very great model here, and I think Triceratops, of course, is one of the more famous dinosaurs there is. Beautiful animal, one of the largest Ceratopsids. I think the only one larger might have been Eo Triceratops, and even then, they might, it might be like synonymous. And of course, there is that whole debate about whether Taurosaurus is a Triceratops. We've mentioned that a little bit before. And we have included Taurosaurus before. But I think that is still debated as to whether or not they are synonymous in different growth stages. But we just really aren't super sure. And at the end of the day, species distinctions, they fluctuate a lot. And not even just for extinct animals, but for real, like living animals. So it's, um, it's always up for debate. 
Anyways, we are coming up to the end of the, the time lapse, so this is a shorter one today. So you can see we're using a lot of these new fern mods as well as part of Danny Bob Scenery Pack. Um, they've just kept updating it. But uh, yeah, that's it for this this episode of, um, well, the, the time lapse of this episode. So I'll just show you guys the cinematics of the dinosaurs exiting the hatchery. And then, of course, we will uh, just hop into the uh, real time portion of today's video. I'll catch you guys there. All right, everyone, here we are in the game itself. And let's check out our new larger habitat over here. So as I mentioned before, uh, we do have the um, four different species here. Is it five now? I can't remember. I added the Ankylosaurus very last minute. So four or five different species because my brain is too tired to count because I just haven't been getting the best sleep. I should do soon. Now that my term's over and now I'm on Easter break, I should be getting a lot more sleep and that will be a good thing. Um, but yeah, this is quite a big habitat, the biggest one so far, and we can look on the map itself to see the, the scale of it. As you can see, the big thick curvy fence is actually the invisible fence, so we don't see that. And as you may notice, we have a lot of these like individual bits of fence here. That's actually just outlining some of the rocks so that the dinosaurs don't clip through them with the invisible fence. Pretty useful technique if you guys want to uh, use that for your own parks as well. And yeah, let's just have a look. This is meant to be, like I said, a North American Cretaceous habitat. It's something we've done before, but not to the scale. Using a lot of these really beautiful dinosaur models. Of course, the uh, Triceratops with the prehistoric park. Um, skin variant, I think, looks really great. This is a beautiful dinosaur overall, and I think using all the different skins together actually works pretty well. Usually I only use one or two uh, to provide like a sexual dimorphism type of vibe, but... Honestly, here, all the different skins work really well together and they look really beautiful. You know, when they're not clipping into themselves massively like that, which has always been a bit of a problem with Jurassic World Evolution. Uh, we've got the Edmontosaurus, of course, just a solitary one. Usually with Hadrosaurus and Iguanodontids, I like to put them in big herds, but for some reason, I always have this image of an Edmontosaurus being, like, happy both ways, and I don't know where this image has come from. I can't imagine it's got any scientific basis, but, like... The idea of a solitary Edmontosaurus just never really left my head and it seems to work fine. So yeah, I've just got a solitary Edmontosaurus here in this habitat and I think it looks beautiful. Again, this is one of my favorite of favorite mods in the game of all time. I think it just looks beautiful overall and just huge props to the, the authors of the mod. Like, beautiful, beautiful work. Uh, over here we got the uh, Alamosaurus. Now these guys are really cool. They actually replaced the Brachiosaurus, the 1993 Brachiosaurus, which is fine for me. I don't use the uh, 1993 one that much, uh, if ever really. And I think the Alamosaurus provides some really good variety in terms of the sauropods. They've got the beautiful scutes on the back. I believe on the Nexus, the mod author did mention that it's not the most um, accurate of Alamosaurus, but I think it's still pretty on point. Like as far as sauropods go, this looks pretty good. I imagine maybe the few things you might want to change are... Actually, I don't even know. Maybe the feet, but uh, I'm not familiar enough with the species to to really uh, comment on the accuracy as much, but I think it looks really good overall. Um, the scoots especially, I think, are really nice and add some like really nice uh, contrast between this and 
uh, some of the other sauropod species, like I've said. But beautiful skins as well. Um, I don't think the skins are actually changed from the base game, but they I think they might be, I'm not 100% sure. But they, they look really nice nonetheless. I got these two, which is the green one and the like slightly reddish one, again to emulate sexual dimorphism, and I think they look really great. Of course, this whole thing is Cretaceous North America, and these dinosaurs all did kind of live together at, this, at a similar time, at a similar location. Maybe not necessarily all together in a location like this, but nonetheless, I think it looks really cool. And when I first made the habitat on the time lapse, you may have noticed it may have been a bit small. So I actually extended it quite a bit further. Now we have this big kind of watering hole area on the side over there. And they really have quite a lot of space. And I might even extend it further in the future. But right now it ends kind of at this cliff, which I think looks pretty cool. And then we can, of course, walk more in the park down here. And I think there will be another really big kind of Jurassic ha North America habitat with like Brachiosaurs and uh, Diplodocus and stuff like that. So that's going to be quite fun as well. Have I missed anyone? Yes, the Struthia Mimuses. So they are pretty cool. Again, this is the second time we're actually using them. Love the feathering. Beautiful animals. And uh, like I've, I've talked about them before, I think they're a great filler animal for big herd habitats like this. But they're also gorgeous in their own right. In this situation, they wouldn't necessarily be Struthia Mimuses because it is Cretaceous North America. I think I would probably consider them Ornithomimuses. Uh, that would be pretty cool. I don't think there is an Ornithomimus mod, but Struthia Mimus is similar enough that I feel like we can use them without any issue. Oh, and of course the Ankylosauruses here, which are my last minute addition, because I kind of forgot we had them. This is probably one of the first mods I ever covered in Jurassic World Evolution, like way back when, and it still remains one of my favorite um, models in the game. I think it looks so good. The mod, mod also did a brilliant job on making it look really realistic with the proportion, with the, with the tail club, everything just looks really nice and definitely um, a lot more realistic than the version we had in the game. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much all the dinosaurs in here, and I was very happy with this habitat overall. I think it looks quite nice. I like the observation area with the all sunken area here with the lower fence. I did some work here with some of the decoration mods, just to make it look a bit more interesting. And I think I figured out how to like get these curves in. It's just when you make a circle, you put your path going inwards, um, like in segments, kind of like that, and then you end up with these nice curves, and I think they look pretty cool. But yeah, overall, very happy with this uh, this build. Only thing I'm not super happy with is how this fence just disappears and doesn't have a pylon. Uh, pylon? Is that the word? I don't know. But yeah, that I think we'll figure out something to do with that later on. Maybe add a rock or something to hide it. But yeah, very happy with this habitat. Very big, very lush. I do like all the foliage. Uh, again, some of the new scenery mods that have been added are the smaller clusters of ferns, which I think look quite nice as well. And there have been some other, like, just odds and ends that I've been adding to the park overall. So let's go over to the... Uh, so if you look here at the operations center, we have more crates and barrels. For example, we've got some new containers, new crates and barrels. And I'll just scatter them around just to look. I think they look really nice, like just all over the place. You know, provides a lot of interest and adds more like grittiness to the operation center, I think. Makes it look a lot more like used and lived in, which is nice. More habitats to come. We'll probably have a small one here. Another one over here just to fill in these gaps and probably more shops as well, I think down there. One thing I did realize is now we don't have path access to this side of the park, which is going to be quite a big one. So I think that's going to be another major monorail center and a hub so that we don't need a path, but they'll come down here anyways. And we've got loads of space here for some big habitats, I think. So quite excited for that. Uh, yeah, anyways, that's it for today's episode. Relatively short one. Do hope you've enjoyed it. hope you've enjoyed watching the, the dinosaurs here. Got some really fun cinematics for you guys, so... Do you stick around for those? And uh, yeah, do you like the video if you did like it? Uh, do comment as well if you have any requests, any suggestions for this park. And just let me know what you think of it. Do subscribe for more Planet Zoo and Jurassic World Evolution and Prehistoric Kingdom content. Though <laughs> I've kind of really upped the content of my channel now. And uh, I've, it's a bit of a heavier workload, but I, I do really enjoy it. So that'll be quite fun. Jurassic World Evolution videos, of course, every Friday at 5 p.m. UK time. Plan to videos every Wednesday at 5 p.m. UK time and Prehistoric Kingdom at Monday 5 p.m. UK time. So without all that said, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!